Okay, we're inside the Travis County uh, Fairgrounds for what's known as the Maker Fair. And actually, we found this serendipitously when we were making our plan. This is a, well, I don't know, an extravaganza of people who have hobbies and crafts and things to share with one another. I looked uh, on YouTube, there were a couple of videos from here. But obviously, this is going to be fertile ground for some very interesting things that people are doing. What's over here is actually a YouTube stand. Uh, people make, I don't know, things out of interesting parts. So we're here at the Maker Fair 2007 in Austin, Texas. Make your own YouTube channel and get a shirt. Let's show you how. And there's YouTube and there's a bunch of videos and video cameras showing you how to make YouTube. A little advanced work here. I don't know whether Google is sponsoring this or not. And, uh, it's off of um, an internal system right now. It's got 38 sensors, 14 motors, it has an IR sensor, a tilt sensor, and a camera up front in its nose. What are, is it just that one, or do you make other pets too? This is our initial product launch. We've been developing this for three years. Oh, you like the robots? There are projects on every subject, literally. Uh, Recipes to robots to blinky lights to fire to kids science fair projects um, anything you can imagine. We've got birthday cakes. We've got how to make play-doh. We've got everything. Um, and if it's here's a how-to backyard fair. This is the popular science booth. Here's how to make beer, which kind of be interesting. Things you can do with your things you can find with your phone. Here's your own backyard distillery. Here at the How To Zone, how to fly a human powered hydrofoil. This will be the wheel that's part of the whole action. So this is powered as you bike, correct? So you oh really? Alright, these are my kind of people. Pirate radio. Boy, that's something that's changed a lot over the years with the advent of the internet. You guys run a pirate radio station? Oh yeah. That's one of the coolest things that's actually gotten out of vogue with the internet. Well, interestingly enough, um, the internet and pirate radio now go quite hand in hand because uh, today instead of having the studio where you where you have the transmitter, people now now uh, do shows from their own homes. Right. Do it, do it uh, in an internet stream and then and then play it on the radio. Right. Are you familiar with Now Live? Have you seen Now Live and Ustream? Those sites? No. Yeah, they're they have this thing that's I call it social casting, where uh -huh. you can. Either do it, you know, via your phone or Google Talk, or you could do it um, with your webcam. Uh -huh. So here's a robot puppet. Now, what is the what does the puppet do? He's uh, he's controlled by the computer. So um, it's a software that I wrote, and it goes through sends serial commands out to the USB port, right. to the Arduino board, and that goes up to the servo controller here, and that just basically tells which of the nine. String motors and which of the three turning motors down here uh, should go with the switch. Oh, cool. Thank you very much. Bleep Lab Stingamagoo. Build your own synthesizer. This is great to get kids with their hands on. It kind of demystifies geekdom. Actually, a celebration of being a geek. And I guess even uh, today on my birthday at age blah blah, I am uh, a geek. An old geek, but a geek nonetheless. Here's some robot instruments from the folks from Servo Magazine. And if you're a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000, Tom Servo was one of the robots. So robot musical instruments. There's another robot band, Screaming Baby Heads and the Instruments of Mass Destruction. I don't know, I think I've heard this in a hotel room somewhere and it kept me up at night. 
This is a robot glove with babbling head, Frogo and Seeker robot. And you use your uh, hand controller. I've seen some of that in gaming. Kind of connects. So you can control using your hand that robot. So these are the inflatable speakers, which actually is pretty cool. These are recyclable, reusable. Sorry, by Mark Greenberg, in, the inventor of the inflatable speaker. So what, where would you, what's the most practical application for the inflatable speakers? Practical application is, any, I mean, anywhere where you would have regular speakers in place. Uh, these ones, I mean, this one's waterproof, so it can be used outside. I mean, it's completely closed. Um, and just, you know, for fun or, or whatever anybody wants to do. I've got real small ones, and uh, that great big one over there has, has some trouble in, uh, in assembly. I guess they want to see that dying.